Hey guys, it is Alexis and Lillian. So we're doing another video in our queer advice series. And this time we're gonna be talking about some tips that we have for newly out lesbians and bisexual women. We've been getting messages from people who are like, hey, I just recently came to terms with my sexuality or I just came out or I can finally live as an out woman and asking questions because there's so much to learn. There's like a whole new etiquette sort of in the queer world. So we thought we'd share some tips that we would have liked to know back then when we were in those shoes. Well, I was never really in those shoes. I came out like not that that long ago So I can't really give advice in that sense, but I can definitely give advice to someone who's been dating guys and then Making the switch making the switch to the good side. Exactly. First of all, I think one of the big questions is always like How the hell do I meet other queer people? You're coming out of this cave and you're like, I am queer <laughs> Where are my other people? Or coming out of a closet. Damn it. <laughs> How Why did we come out of caves? <laughs> Coming out of the cave. Um, um, oh. <laughs> oh god, we're turning into one person! So I have an anecdote to share. Go for it. So when I was first exploring my life as a new out girl, I was 18. An new out girl. <laughs> I wasn't a woman yet. Yet. Well, maybe I'm at 18. My first time exploring the whole queer world was when I finished high school, left Italy and all the conservative people there behind, and went to North America for a year. So I was first in New York and then in Toronto, and I was like, I'm far away from everyone I know, let me explore this queer scene. So I was like, how do I meet other people? And the first thing you might think of is a bar. So, because it's always like, you know, go into a gay bar. But then I feel like you have this fantasy that you go to a bar and there's gonna be like all these hot lesbians and someone's gonna be hitting you up. The thing is, I was underage here in Toronto. So I tried to go to a bar that would let me in and it was a Tuesday night, so they didn't check IDs. But the bar that I was at, it just had like an open mic night. So there was like three people in the audience. The other people were like in their 40s. But they did come and talk to me, That's so I was part of this gang of like 40 year old women and then me at 18 so I was like okay not what I hoped for but hey it's other queer people but then it ended when we went to another bar and there they checked ID and then they're like what the fuck you're not even of age bye whatever <laughs> anyway I was not very successful with the whole bar thing I kept trying to go to bars but what actually really helped me out was finding queer youth groups. If you're not really a youth anymore, then there's other groups that you can find. But I find that especially in larger cities, there's usually some sort of organization that puts on these lesbian, gay, whatever events. And I went to one in New York, which was really fun. They even like picked you up and it was all very discreet. Like if you didn't have a car, they picked you up from home. Was it like a van? It was like a van. Okay. And there it was funny because I went to this event. Again, I was 18. I had just left <laughs> Italy. And I remember they were like, Oh my god, your accent is so cute. <laughs> like, ooh, that's the I still had more of a German accent back Aww. then. Uh, so I was like, oh, they like me. So my first advice would be do online research, find queer organizations and get involved in that in mm -hmm. some sort of way. If the whole bar thing isn't an option or isn't really working out for you. Yeah. And with this day and age, apps are also a very good way to find other queer peeps. So it's like you can look for just other queer friends and then they can bring you to spots that they go. Just hit up some people on those apps. Yeah, so you can use Tinder for this, of course. Okay, Cupid. Her is like a app made specifically for queer women. Um, it's also a bit of a social network, so that's a good one to recommend. And another little tip is when you are on these apps in your bio to definitely highlight that you are queer or whatever you identify as and that you're looking for something more maybe casual or serious but there's a lot of people that are looking for threesomes on apps which like is annoying um so if you're into it great but if you're not like just make sure you highlight that yeah i actually heard that a lot of girls especially that are more like straight appearing or whatever don't get a lot of matches especially on apps like tinder because a lot of girls just think you know what like she's probably straight a fun fact back in those early early gay Lillian days, I actually went on a date with a girl through Craigslist. 
I didn't even know about that. What? You never confessions. Even... I don't know why. I think I was even on OK Cupid, but I put up an ad because I think it was more acceptable in those days. I don't know. We don't have OK. We don't have Craigslist and <laughs> judging. In Europe, so I was like, Just and I wrote this really long thing, and then I met up with this girl, and well, we only had one date. It wasn't that great. Hold on, so then what happened? Did you guys kiss? Like, did no. anything? No, we just Kay. went don't on the date no. and we just talked. Don't say no like that. Well, I would have been thrilled. I mean, I wouldn't have been thrilled, but I just wanted some sort of experience. <laughs> Make I just, up your mind. I went on a date. Okay. And that was it. And was she much older than you? No, but she was like way too Canadian small town for me. Okay, so this person was also looking at Craigslist for... Okay, we were like 18. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My girlfriend is judging me. Anyway, I'm not going to be sharing these confessions anymore. Okay, I did not know that. That is so funny. Usually it's a big networking thing. So queers tend to hang out in flocks. So a lot of times if you meet some people, they're going to introduce you to more people and then that's going to have a whole snowballing effect. So yeah, a lot of times it's going to be finding that first connection and Again, this is much easier if you're in a big city and depending on what country you live in. So another big point, of course, is sex. So this can be super intimidating, whether it's the first time you're having sex at all or just the first time you're having sex with a woman. There's always a lot of questions like, how do you do it? How do you go about it? What do I need to learn? Do I need to practice something before? Practicing your scissoring skills or my advice is don't watch porn. <laughs> to learn from that because that is usually not realistic at all um, and just you know go slow and make sure you feel comfortable it's all about just like having fun feeling it out um, maybe some people might not seem nervous but it is a new body to them too if this is the first time you're having sex so like Lillian said just like kind of go with the flow and have fun and it's gonna just come naturally to you so there's no like crazy techniques or thing that you need to know. It's always going to be a new body, whether it's a man or a woman. Any sex with a new person is going to be kind of nerve-wracking and there's a lot to learn about that person's body and how you go together and everything. So don't overthink it with the whole gender thing or genitalia. And if you really do want to know about the nitty-gritty of how to do certain things, there's plenty of information out there. Google and YouTube and all of that. <laughs> Exactly. So then another whole thing is if you do go on a date with a girl, right? It's a whole it's a whole new etiquette. Who does what? What are sort of the unscripted rules of dating? I think that one big thing is if you go on like your typical bar date or whatever, who pays the bill? Because mm. if you're going out with men, not always, but sometimes people just assume, oh, the man's going to pay for it. How is it when there's, you know, two women, two girls on a date? The unwritten rule is sort of that who asked for the date should pay for it. I sort of always went by, hey, if I like her, I would be happy to pay for it. You know, I just think it's kind of mm -hmm. nice mm -hmm. to do it that way, or you can obviously always split it. A good way too is if you are vibing and you really like this person and you want to see them again, you can just be like, oh, you can get it next time. Boom. Queen of flirting right here. That's a good one. Other things about dating, like who move. makes the first move and who asks for the date and stuff like that. Honestly, there are no rules about that. Um, just build up the courage and do it. That's what I would say because it's annoying to always just wait for the other person to do it and then sometimes it's never going to happen. Yeah, I know. That's, that's not a fun feeling when you're like, okay, like do they not like me? They're not kissing me. Like, if you want them to kiss you, you just kiss them first. And then you're both kissing and boom, bang, boom, you're in the bedroom. Another thing that kind of happens when you're just coming out is, okay, you're in the whole queer world now. You need to act or dress or present in some sort of different way to be more visibly queer, to be more part of the community. Some people like doing that because it's like, okay, now I can finally show like my identity to like the fullest and I can like be my full self. And if that's the case, then like totally do that and go for it and embrace your true being. Um, but some people do it because they think that it's just like what you have to do when you come out. It's like, okay, now that like I'm queer, I have to like shave my head. <laughs> Um, but no, I have to get like this edgy haircut and 
rock Tegan and Sarah band tees. I feel personally attacked because I've done all of this. And when I, again, was newly out gay, I got that Tegan and Sarah mullet haircut. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. I had a Tegan and Sarah shirt. And I even had one of those American Apparel legalized gay shirts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh dear. And Sarah even talked to you on when she was. Oh yeah. Fun fact, if you want to see Sarah from Tegan and Sarah talk to me, look up Tegan and Sarah Lillian. Oh in yeah. New York. Yeah, you, oh, in New York. She okay. thought my name was adorable. Well, it is. There is so much great queer content out there, so books, shows, movies, so I sort of watched all of those and then slowly you're even learning through that. Mm -hmm. Back in the day I watched the L word, now there's mm -hmm. the new L word out there. Um, obviously it can be like way over the top, you're like okay, like we're not gonna rip each other's clothes off like the second we see each other in a bar, in a bathroom or something and like have sex, like it could Why happen. <laughs> It could happen, but it's like, that's not how it is all the time. And like, don't feel like ashamed of like, oh, no one's like jumping on me. Like, I can't really remember the titles of books that I read. I did read a few. Please leave them in the comments, your favorite books. I know there's a lot of great books out there. There's a lot of bad lesbian movies. Yeah, I can there. think of like so many where I'm like, hold on a second. But you know what movie I really liked back then? Lost and Delirious, mm. which is like so sad. But I was like, it's oh my God, so Piper sad. Oh, it's so cute slash hot oh and actually that imagine me and you movie that was really cute i thought black mirror the san junipero episode i'm like obsessed because it's just like such a nice episode it's like curated so nicely and the way that they show like love between two women is like so nice and like so beautiful and they don't like rush into everything and like oh we're making it and like scissoring each other and like it's just yeah, it's just like very tasteful and nice. I mean, you guys are already watching this video, so you are on the right track. There's plenty of stuff out there on YouTube, I think a bit more realistic probably. Um, so a lot that you can learn. But yeah, it's also really fun to just see yourself represented in a movie or a show. Also, we have a whole series on advice on how to flirt with a girl, how to know if a girl's gay, how to make the first move. So check those out if you want to delve more into those topics. Any more advice for newly out? queer gals i would say yeah just like have fun with it meet people be flirty and you'll be great if you guys watching have any tips or any questions please use this as a discussion forum leave some comments and then we'll go from there also guys if you like this video and you're interested in all the queer content please subscribe and leave a like for some support we have another video in our queer dating series coming out soon. It's gonna be the biggest mistakes in lesbian dating. Ooh. All right, well, thank you for watching and we'll see you at the next one then. Bye! See you